Over 6,000 crew members are responsible for ensuring that all of the operations on an aircraft carrier are carried out perfectly. However, given the large number of people there, there is a possibility that someone will fall over into the sea. What happens when someone falls over and is missing in the sea? The safety procedures on an aircraft carrier are guaranteed, and it is typically impossible for the crew to fall off of the aircraft carrier. Nevertheless, there have been cases where aircraft carrier crew members still falls off into the sea. You should know that the typical contemporary aircraft carrier's height can reach tens of meters. When a person touches the surface of the water after falling from an altitude of tens of meters, the tension on the surface will make them feel as if they're falling on cement. This is because the force of gravity acting on the water, similar to the ground itself. Because of this, a person will likely die before they can be rescued if they fall off an aircraft carrier while in the incorrect position. Like other types of warships, aircraft carriers are equipped with unique protective measures. The aircraft carrier does have guardrails and it also has its very own protective net. However, the guardrails on the aircraft carrier are retractable and relatively easy to operate. This does have some bearing on the military function that it serves. The transportation of fighter aircraft is the primary function of an aircraft carrier. Because of this primary function, the deck of the aircraft carrier is designed to accommodate an enormous runway for the takeoff and landing of fighter aircraft. The fighter wouldn't be able to take off or land if all the normal guardrails are installed on the deck of the aircraft carrier, thus the guardrail of the carrier needs to be set up to be retractable. In addition, anti-fall nets are attached to the extension of the ship side at the beginning and ending points of the runway on the deck. These are the points where there are no protective barriers, thus the nets are installed to prevent crew members from falling into the water. Additionally, the crew on the aircraft carrier has been put through rigorous training, making it extremely difficult for anyone to fall into the ocean mistakenly. So what are the steps or actions that are taken when a crew member does fall into the sea? Anyone on the ship who witnesses the individual going overboard must immediately notify the navigation bridge by shouting, Man overboard, starboard, or port side. It's important to provide the side of the ship, as the ship will be turned in that direction. Even if the person in the water is not visible, a life ring is launched over the same side as quickly as possible. The officer in charge of the con, or control of the engines, gives the order to raise the alarm throughout the entire ship. When the man overboard warning sounds, some sailors on board will assemble in a particular location so that they can be ready to lower one or more boats to form a rescue party. All the sailors who are not immediately participating in the search and rescue operation report to their respective muster stations so they can be counted. The muster counts are reported to the bridge, which should indicate who is missing from the ship's company. The ship immediately conducts a search and rescue operation in an attempt to find the individual who fell overboard and bring them back on board. But how exactly are they going to search for the person who went missing after falling into the ocean? A ship handling maneuver known as a man overboard rescue turn, sometimes called a person overboard, is typically carried out as soon as it is discovered that a person has fallen overboard into the water. The Anderson turn, also known as the single turn, the fast turn, also known as the Q-turn or the figure eight turn, the Williamson turn and the Charnow turn are all methods that can be used to bring a vessel closer to the position of a person. The choice of maneuver is determined by several different criteria, such as the position of the person who went overboard, whether the casualty is instantly witnessed going overboard, or if their missing status is reported at a later time. The area that is available for navigating by the vessel whether the ship is using engines or using sails. The Williamson turn is a type of maneuver that is utilized to bring a ship or boat under power back to a point it has previously passed through, most commonly for rescuing a casualty that has occurred at sea. It was named after Lieutenant John Williamson, who served in the United States Navy and used the vessel in 1943 to rescue a man who had fallen overboard. However, according to John McPhee's book Uncommon Carriers, the technique was formerly known as the Butakov pipe. It was implemented during the Russo-Japanese War to maintain weapons at the same distance from the adversary. It was also utilized by the United States Navy nuclear submarines to eliminate dead zones on their sonar systems. The Williamson turn is most appropriate when the vision is poor, 
at night or when the point where the person went overboard has already gone out of sight. It is also most suited when the point is still quite close. On the other hand, it is adaptable to any circumstance. The Anderson Turn, sometimes known as a single turn, is a maneuver that is frequently performed to send a ship or boat with engines back to a spot it has previously passed through. This is typically done to retrieve a casualty in the shortest amount of time feasible. The Anderson Turn is often used when the point is still in sight. There are some circumstances where a Sharnow or Williamson Turn might be more appropriate. Traveling back to the starting place will take longer with either option. In the best case scenario, when dealing with a man overboard situation, the vessel should always be maneuvered upwind of the individual. To reduce the risk of injury, the vessel's engines should be turned off while the individual is moved well forward from the propellers. In the event of a man overboard situation on a sailboat, the rapid turn or quick turn is the ordinary course of action for sailing ships. Despite the existence of other methods, it is still a reliable technique that has the potential to be the most effective approach depending on the circumstances. Because it prevents a jibe, the quick turn approach is particularly useful in situations where there are insufficient crew members or when the vessel is operating in rough seas. In its most basic form, the rapid turn is a figure eight. And that, my friends, will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of the topic in the comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.